We'll take a look at the numbers for these two fighters. Now, they're both tall for the division. Rodriguez struggled with the height of Sims in that loss that Morrow referenced, um, and uh, that was a problem for him, and Romero is a tall fighter. Now, Romero is 31. He got a late start as a pro. He may feel his biological uh, boxing clock ticking a little bit. And the rules for our fights tonight. No three knockdown rule in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. All right, it's time to begin the fistic festivities with Hall of Fame ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming your way, brought to you by Canelo Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. And we extend a special welcome to the brave men and women serving around the world and joining us tonight on AFN, the American Forces Network. Well, our opening bout is promoted in association with Promociones del Pueblo and is presented by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. And Blue Moon Entertainment, prepare to be entertained. And now we feature super lightweights in the ring, introducing our three judges scoring from ringside from Nevada, Tim Cheatham. From California, Max DeLuca, and from New York, John McKay. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Robert Hoyle. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled, super lightweights in the ring. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with gold trim, hailing from Villa del Carbon, Mexico. He weighed in at 143 pounds. His record, 14 wins, no losses, nine wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the 2016 Mexican Olympian, the undefeated Juan Pablo, El PV Romero. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction, wearing red trunks with black trim, fighting out of Los Angeles by way of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 142 pounds. His record stands at 11 wins, one loss and one draw with 10 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the hard hitting southpaw known as the Dominican kid, Elvis Rodriguez. Once again, here's our referee in charge, Robert Hoyle, now to give instructions. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight, obey my commands. Anything on either belt line is gonna be a legal shot. Touch him up, scoot back. Robert Hoyle, an 11-year pro as a referee working his 106th fight, far better known and more experienced as a judge. Saturday night, all right for fighting, especially in the fight capital of the world. The bell and round one, Southpaw Rodriguez against the undefeated Romero. Rodriguez talked about the mistakes he made against Sims, working on a lot of things with one of the great fight minds in Freddie Roach. Looking forward to this fight, and you know, Romero is the volume puncher in this match, averaging around 70 punches per round. Rodriguez, 42 punches around. He's the measured power puncher. Roach saying they're working on throwing efficient combinations, showing up his defense and being more agile in the ring. And there he pivots off the ropes, Abner. Yeah, and that's one of the things about Rodriguez, you know, despite the KO ratio that he's got, he could be too defensive sometimes, you know. I think he should pressure a little bit more. He's a, you know, he starts really slow. I'd like to see him to pressure a little bit more, Rodriguez. Ten of his 11 wins have come inside the distance for Rodriguez, firing off the one-two from the southpaw, splitting the guard with the left down the middle. Nice hard right hand followed by left hook, and Romero working the body on Rodriguez, and Romero putting on the pressure and delivering the offense. 
Nice left straight to the breadbasket by Rodriguez. Romero definitely going to keep doing that. Rodriguez giving, giving them the opportunity to work. So Romero takes advantage of it. Romero has three first round knockouts. Last one came in December of 2018. A minute and a half gone in the opening frame. Expect to see Romero continue, as Abner said, with those combinations to the body. It's his calling card. Yeah, and he told us he's going in there, he's going to be hyper aggressive, and he is going to get the win no matter what. The what? In the form of Elvis Rodriguez, who just had a right hand bounced off his chin. That's a really good shot from Rodriguez. And like I mentioned, when he's offensive, he could be really dangerous. Nice, nice counter right hand by Rodriguez. And that was the, the shot by Romero, the right hand founding its mark on Rodriguez. Under a minute left here in the first round. The jab from the southpaw intercepting the left hook attempt by Romero. Yeah, that's Romero trying to take the jab away from Rodriguez. Doing a good job by that. A Mexican fighter with a left hook to the liver. What will they come up with next? <laughs> Unprecedented. <laughs> good defense exhibited by Rodriguez, avoiding that combination by Romero. That was good from Romero. Even though he came up short with the right hand, there was a punch right after that, so, you know, it gave him the opportunity to land. Nice body work by both fighters and an action-packed three minutes to get our action underway. We'll look at what these men need to do to win our keys to victory. For Rodriguez, uh, he underuses his jab. It sets up his power shots. Now, his knockouts come with the right hook and straight left almost equally, but I think the left might be his most important weapon tonight. The uppercut could work uh, when Romero tries to go down to the body, which we saw. For Romero, uh, he throws great combinations. We saw that, look for that all night. And he's an excellent body puncher. We've already seen that in this fight. Now, Rodriguez does not fight well going backwards. And Romero has already made him go back, and he needs to continue that. Bell, round two, Romero receiving instruction from his father and trainer, Pablo. Uh, Rodriguez, of course, getting instructions from Freddie Roach, and Rodriguez with a sharp left hand and looking a lot sharper here to kick off round two. Yeah, starting off the, the round really good, Rodriguez. Like I mentioned, you keep throwing combinations, you'll be good. You gotta be more, defen more offensive than defensive. <laughs> Those punches were blocked by the guard of Romero. Mentioned Freddie Roach has been Rodriguez's trainer his whole career. His mom bought him a Pacquiao t-shirt when he was younger and looked and said, you're gonna be trained someday by Freddie Roach. A mom knows everything. Yeah. Use it, use it. That deserves a mamma mia for sure. I think it's story. Yeah. <laughs> and Romero working the body of Rodriguez. Rodriguez ducking and then delivering some offense of his own. Nice left hand over the top by Rodriguez. And he, he, Rodriguez will make Romero miss, and, but he's timid sometimes. He won't let go of his hands, and Romero takes advantage and he's coming forward. Romero firing in all cylinders and has Rodriguez backed up. Good counter shot by Rodriguez, though. And in fact, as active as Romero is, Rodriguez getting the more eye-catching shots in this round thus far. Yeah, a couple of the counter punches he's landed have been good, but I'll tell you, Romero's going to town. <laughs> a lot of those punches blocked. There's a right uppercut on the inside by Rodriguez. But you're right, Al, he's yeah. an all-action fighter and bringing the pressure. Yeah, a lot of clean punches from Rodriguez, but it's only one, two here and there. But Romero, Romero's just busy. Now, the, the point is, of course, Rodriguez is a good power puncher, 11 knockouts, so we'll see if he can hurt Romero with one of those. Lead right hand found its target for Romero, putting the pressure, backing Rodriguez up. Rodriguez along the ropes, trying to escape with a right hook, a check hook. 
Team Rodriguez always on that back foot. Always on that back foot. And, and gets pressure. countered with the left hook upstairs up. You know, this fight's important for both men for different reasons. Rodriguez, who's now getting whacked around, and needs it as a comeback win. And Romero, 31, now to make a statement to show he can do something in this division. Romero committed on securing his 10th knockout, although Rodriguez has had his moments in round two. Started off strong, has had some good counter attacks and some great footwork and a little bit of both right in there in the sequence. He's got the boxing abilities. He boxes really good. He moves, he jabs. But, you know, when he does land in those combinations, he stays put. And that's where Romero, yeah. you know, is able to land. Yeah, Rodriguez had close to 225 amateur bouts. Started at the age of 11, but it's Romero working the body and bringing the fight to Elvis Rodriguez here in the second stanza. Rodriguez, when he gets pinned against the ropes or, you know, in the corners, it doesn't work well for him. He's had some good countering opportunities, but for the most part, it's that activity of Romero. Some landing, some not, but he's he kind of controlled this fight with all that activity. And later on in the round, you're going to see an uppercut by Rodriguez. He has a good uppercut. We mentioned that in the keys. And also, in his last fight, uh, Romero was stunned by Barrio with an uppercut early in the fight. Beautiful body shots. Good job. Freddie Roach impressed with Rodriguez's body work. I'm sure Romero's dad is also impressed with his offense to the body as we begin round three, scheduled for 10. And in fact, Rodriguez stepping up to a 10 round fight for the first time in his career. Yeah, Romero never... facing uh, a lefty for the uh, first time since he faced Sergio Torres Alvarado in November 2020. Excuse me. Uh. No, that's okay. Yeah, Romero was too, uh, experienced going 10 rounds twice. And as you point out, Rodriguez never. So that's something we have to look for as we get to those later rounds. Team Rodriguez starts really well. He started the last round really good. Ooh, good that's hook. Right hook. And Romero digging away to the body, hoping to make that early investment to drain Rodriguez, knowing that he could go 10 rounds for the first time. So far, a good wow. round for Rodriguez, doing a good job. Three punch combination. And Romero's right there as well. And Boy, both of them looking to be body snatchers here in this yeah. fight. It's a fun fight. It's a, it's a really good style matchup, and both men anxious to win it. They, you know, they're very committed to this fight yeah. for a couple of different reasons. Certain Hall of Famer by the name of Al Bernstein said that this one could be a very tasty treat for the fight fans who are here early at MGM Grand. Imagine that, Al, right uh, again. Uh, once in a while, you know. It's a thing about an acorn. <laughs> Coming up on the midpoint of the third, Rodriguez trying to work the jab and then lunges in with the lead right hook curling behind the guard, but good counter work by Romero. And Romero sits down on every punch. Interesting note about Romero. You know, I'm a man of many trades and hats, and there was a point where I was a manager and I was going to sign Romero. I saw him out coming out the Olympics. I guess he heard how much money you wanted for your percentage. <laughs> no moss. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I, saw, I can see I saw why you were fired up for him. Yeah, though. yeah, he's he's a good fighter, man. Puts up really good pressure, good combination. Works the body really good. Wow, nice right hook, right uppercut by Rodriguez, and there was a really good back and forth going on here in this, this third round. This is a really good. This is the closest round of the fight, and Rodriguez is in this round uh, much more than he was the first two. Romero thinking where he's placing his punches, diversifying his attack by Rodriguez as well, and and the attention to the body, it cannot yeah. be overstated, Abner. Yeah, no, exactly, and if this fight goes the distance, you know, for the rounds, Romero has the edge here because he is working the body really good. And it was one of the keys for Al Bernstein, for Romero, go to that body. Both of them have been doing that. Yeah, they're actually, yeah, and Rodriguez as well, especially with the right hook. Not all lefties have a good right hook, he has one.
Listen to me. He's waiting for you. When he sees that opportunity, when you see that opportunity, just go for it. When he throws that right, you block it and then come with the left hook. Okay? And all the exercises we've done, remember, this is where you have to apply it now. So be alive. Be alive. Get him to the corner and start right there hurting him. Combinations. Round number four. Fair to say that the pace so far behooves Romero? It does. It does, uh, especially because he, he, you know, that's the only gear he knows. Going forward, being the, the aggressive. Now uh, Rodriguez being the one that's always on his back foot. You know, eventually, I mean, especially with the body work, he's going to get tired. You know, Rodriguez came up this round to stand his ground. We'll see if he can. Oh, he, wow, he almost yeah. stood Romero straight up with that uppercut. Well, Rodriguez has it. They both have good uppercuts, but Rodriguez's has been a little sharper tonight. And yeah, I, Romero likes to use that left uppercut. And I think he can, uh, like you mentioned. I think he's more effective when he's offensive, Rodriguez. He sta stands his ground. He's got great combinations, and he makes every, every punch count. And while Romero definitely throwing punches in bunches, they, in terms of the accuracy in the connect, Sal, they're, they're pretty close. Yeah, it's not a monstrous uh, difference. So, um, oh, nice three-punch combo there by Rodriguez. And, and in this round, Rodriguez, I think, has tried, he's trying very hard to make a statement. Oh, what those uppercuts yes. doing? That left, another oh, left wow. uppercut. Wow. He heard him with that one. You know, Mike Tyson's supposed to be in attendance. He must be admiring this ending work. Uppercut. Hey, ain't no party like an uppercut party because an uppercut party don't stop. <laughs> there was a straight to the body that just hurt Romero as well. Oh, but here comes Romero. Three punch combination. My goodness, toe to toe in the center of the ring. The temptation is to think Rodriguez needs room to be effective, but we're finding out in this round that's not necessarily true. So nice to see so much body work. And not avoiding it. And there again, another left uppercut. That one to the body. Romero fires back with a combination. Yeah, I see Romero throwing a lot this round, but honestly not being effective. Rodriguez landing the most crisp, the most clean punches. That, that, and it's hurt. Oh, him. and he just staggered him. Romero goes down for the first Three, time in his career. Four, five, six, seven. Hey, hands up, hands up, let's go. Rodriguez rattles Romero here in the fourth round, sends him to the canvas for the first time, and Rodriguez working on putting the finishing touches on what has been a fantastic fourth round for him. Double right hook by Rodriguez. You know, Romero is not a fleet of foot fighter, so right now he just can't really use that much movement. He can't. Rodriguez not giving him much space either. And when they are really close, Rodriguez with the sharp, short uppercuts. It has been all about the uppercut for Elvis Rodriguez as he floors Romero in round four. Put some water on his head. Let's go. Okay. That's it. That's that's the worst of it. That's the worst. That was a good round for him, but that's the worst that's happening. Well, Rodriguez, you know, 11 knockouts in his pro career. He's got power, and he showed it in this round. Straight left hand. Uh, you know, he has a good hook, but the straight left hand, uh, I thought tonight was going to be his main weapon, and boy, it was, along with the great uppercuts, of course. And remember, smart there, I think, Abner, to take a knee. <laughs> he took a knee, but he was also on the verge of death. Yeah. This is round five. Rodriguez immediately stands his ground in the center of the ring. The southpaw trying to establish the jab, the high guard of Romero. Romero still doesn't have his sea legs yeah. under him. 
And the problem for Romero is he is not by trade a boxer, does not use a lot of lateral movement, so he's kind of forced to be in the pocket with Rodriguez. Yeah, and it has seemed like Rodriguez uh, is already comfortable in there. So Romero tasting adversity for the first time, going down in round four. Came into the fight with a record of 14 and 0 with nine knockouts, but facing by far his toughest exam in the form of uh, well, a guy who looks rejuvenated right now in Elvis Rodriguez. Rodriguez, you know, he fought five times in 2020. This is his third fight in 2021. He wants to create some momentum, especially coming off that loss to Sims. And in the way he lost. But then again, that Sims fight wasn't an easy fight. No, Kenneth but Sims is a good well, fighter. Rodriguez was a 20 to 1 favorite, just to let you know. He was, but you know what? That's because Kenneth Sims kind of underperformed in a couple of fights. But not that fight. not No, he has talent, and uh, he showed that. Fight. Again, Romero really trying. I mean, he's trying, he's throwing punches, but missing most. Oh, beautifully placed right hook to the body by Rodriguez. But you're right, Romero standing in the pocket, continuing to fire with every intent of violence he can muster, but there is no jab to speak of. Now, and is that jab from Rodriguez as well? It seems like he's got him figured out already. Just measuring him, waiting for him to come in, make him pay. Make a miss, make him pay, as a, wise, a few wise men and women have said. I got you. And the body work of Romero has become a lot less. He hasn't been in position to really throw those body punches the way he wants. And Romero slips a right hand between the high guard of Rodriguez, but Rodriguez, oh, and the counter shot. Connects for Romero. That was a good left hook. That might be the best left hook he's thrown in this fight. Man, great fierce yeah. exchanges on the inside and a variety of punches. Rodriguez trying to utilize his defense but keeps getting hit by Romero here in the final 30 seconds of the fifth. That's a great point, Marl. This is not one-dimensional by either fighter. They're both using many weapons. Left hook to the body by Romero. Juan Pablo Romero trying to bounce. Oh, gets dropped with that left hand over the top by Rodriguez. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Popped, dropped, and stopped. Elvis Rodriguez bounces back from his first loss to improve to 12 of one and one with his 11th knockout handing Juan Pablo Romero his first loss in his 15th professional fight. I, I, we mentioned at the beginning that his knockouts come often with the right hook or the straight left. This was the straight left, and uh, that's the reason I put it in the keys, because I thought that punch was the one he would get to Romero with, and boy, did he. And you know, Romero just never was able to get up. We thought maybe he's going to jump up, and as we look at the count, you, you felt at some point he might be able to get up, no, but he it, just wasn't. It, it was a well-placed left hand right in the chin, and he had no legs underneath him, so he, he didn't even bother to get up. He knew that he, he wasn't going to be able to. That was a setup. Uppercut, right uppercut, and straight, straight left hand down the pipe. Yeah, we saw so many uppercuts tonight from Rodriguez, yeah. and he was aware of that punch, and it took his, his focus away, and the straight left hand got in, and a very impressive win, another knockout for Elvis Rodriguez, and he, he comes back strong, and we, we, another look at it. We'll show you, the, as Abner said, the uppercut was what he tried. He'd land yeah. so many of those. And then the straight left hand. A nice short and, left. Yeah, and it wasn't even a setup. Yeah, he tried yeah. to land that uppercut, yeah. but it was the follow-up punch, the left hand that, you know, did the job. Romero, a 2016 Olympian taste defeat for the first time. A brilliant bounce-back performance for Elvis Rodriguez. And all he can say to his fans is, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I knew you were going to get that in. Now give me a peanut butter and fried banana sandwich. <laughs> and Romero can be eating and celebrating tonight.
as he removes the bitter taste of his last fight, stopping Juan Pablo Romero, a gutsy 31-year-old who didn't turn pro until age 27 and goes down to defeat for the first time here tonight. As we look at this, you know, landing 47% of your power punches is excellent. And many of those were uppercuts, some were right hooks, and some were straight left hands. And the body work, which we noted, both men did, but Rodriguez more effective with it. Playing that air guitar like the king of there rock and roll. Well, fans, we have the time of two minutes, 59 seconds in round number five. A referee in charge reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, the Dominican kid, Elvis Rodriguez. I'm Rodriguez letting us know in uncertain terms that he's back. <sighs> Let's uh, bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, with the official scores at the time of the stoppage. Well, Mo, uh, pretty easy fight to score because all three judges and myself as an unofficial scorer scored it the same way. First two rounds for Romero, next two rounds for Rodriguez, including a 10-8 round in the fourth because of the knockdown. So everybody, including as we look at my card, same as their cards, we all had 38-37 for Rodriguez after four rounds.